What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So now that we're over a week removed from the 2024 NHL draft, I've had time to let the draft marinate, and now going over every single team's prospect pool, I thought it'd be a fun idea to give my updated top 10 prospect pools in the entire NHL. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen I've been dropping each part uh, 25 through 32 two days ago, 17 through 24 yesterday. So we're gonna, just going to give the top 10 here on YouTube. Now, when looking at this, I'm going to be doing guys that have played under 30 games in the NHL. So a guy like David Yurichek that's played 43 doesn't count for Columbus. Someone like Olin Zellweger, Brant Clark, or I, the LA Kings aren't going to be on this, but uh, Simon Edvinson, he's going to count for, they're going to count because they have played under 30 games. That's just the cutoff that I made. So if you have any question marks about some guys, maybe they didn't make the games mark. And when looking at this, when looking at these rankings, I care about quality more than quantity. I would rather have three A- minus or A prospects in my system than 10 B to B plus guys. I think especially with prospects, usually the superstar prospects do eventually pan out. Yes, you could have a bunch of very, very solid promising prospects, second, third round picks, but they're far less likely to hit than the actual top t top tier guys or really materialize into anything. And you can honestly just replace them through free agency. So in looking at this, you're going to notice a theme that I care more so about quality than quantity. So without further ado, we're going to start with first and then just work our way down. I thought that'd be pretty fair because I think the top two is pretty consensus at this point, especially after this most recent draft. Without further ado, first, First, it's the San Jose Sharks. It's got to be the San Jose Sharks, considering they just got the new number one prospect, even though he's going to play in the NHL next year, new pro number one prospect in the entire NHL, or maybe you could say Matt Mitchkov is, but number one or number two, Matt and Celebrini, they got Sam Dickinson, they got Igor Chernyshov, who's probably going to be in my top 50 prospects, I'm going to drop at some point this month, uh, Leo Salin Wallinius. It was a fantastic draft for them, on top of already having a no doubt top 10 prospect pool of guys like Will Smith, Quinton Musty, Philip Beestead, uh, uh, Cam Lund, Shakir, I always botch his name, but the Russian guy, Luka Kagnan, Kagnani, they are set. They are set for the future, as well as also having young guys. He's not a prospect anymore because he played at the NHL full time, but a guy like William Eklund. The Sharks are set. They have a fantastic prospect pool, and I think after this, this year's draft, considering they have two consensus top five prospects in hockey, they now have that legit number, hopefully future number one defenseman in Sam Dickinson. They're loaded. They're the new number one. At number two, Montreal Canadiens, considering they added a top five prospect in the NHL now with Ivan Demidov, as well as adding another very solid piece of Michael Hage on top of Lane Hudson, who tore it up at uh, Boston University, looked very solid at the NHL level. David Reinbacher, I'm really excited to see how he plays. He's still a top, definitely a top 20 de uh, defenseman prospect, maybe even top 10. Uh, Josh Waugh, very good at the AHL level this year. Philip Meshar was good in the OHL. Owen Beck, Jacob Fowler was fantastic at Boston College, as well as Logan Malu tore it up in the AHL this season. The Montreal Canadiens are set in terms of their future on top of already having guys like Slavkovsky, like Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, but their young prospect, affiliated prospects are going to be fantastic and rightfully so. They should be within every, literally everybody's top three for the most part, especially after this draft. At third, we start to get a little bit controversial. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Wild. Again, quality over quantity. When looking at the quantity of Minnesota Wild prospects, there's not a ton, but quality, Z Boyum, top 10 defenseman prospect in the entire NHL, in my opinion, at this point. Danilo Yurov, tore it up in the KHL this season. He was top 10 in my last one. Uh, Jesper Wallstead, arguably the best goalie prospect in the entire NHL, as well as Liam Ogren, 19 points in 26 SHL games this year, former 2022 uh, first round pick. That top four, on top of having a guy like Riley Height that had 117 points the year after getting drafted in the WHL, their top four, and more specifically their top three, is just so impressive. It's arguably the best top, well, I guess the Sharks are Canadians probably would argue with that, but it is fantastic in terms of their top three. It's by far the third best top three, I would say. And considering they have the forward, the defenseman, and the goalie, I like how it's spread out evenly. Some some of these prospect pools have a very good forwards, very good defense before this draft. The Canadians, great defensive prospects. Forwards were maybe slacking a little bit at that point. But when looking at the Wild, they're spread out nicely. They have three elite prospects, as well as Ogren is arguably an elite prospect, and Riley Height. Not a ton after that, but again, to have five high-end prospects like the Minnesota Wild do have, 
I'm going to put them at three. I'm going to respect them, and I'm going to put them at three. At number four, I got the Anaheim Ducks. Did I love them taking Beckett Seneca at third overall? No, not at all. He's still a good prospect, as well as also picking up Solberg. They also, of course, have Olin Zellweger, who is a, just an amazing offensive talent, has been really good at the AHL level. Going to be interesting to see his first season in the NHL. Cutter Gauthier led the entire NCAAs in goals last season. Fantastic goal scorer, as well as Damien Clara. Looks like a solid goaltending prospect. Tristan Luno, uh, very, very good defense defenseman prospect. It's a fantastic pool. You can honestly interchange them in the Minnesota Wild. I slightly do lean the Minnesota Wild just because they have that bona fide goaltending prospect. Well, the Ducks, maybe they, they still have, don't get me wrong, they still have Lucas Dostal. He's very good, but he's technically not a prospect anymore. So in looking at it, I have the Anaheim Ducks checking in at fourth. Next up, I got the Detroit Red Wings. They picked up Michael Brand saying knee guard, and they already had a very, very good uh, prospect pool overall. Axel Sandin, Palika, and Simon Edmondson are two of the best uh, defenseman prospects in the entire NHL. Trey Augustine, probably a top five goaltending prospect, as well as Marco Casper and, and Nate Danielson. They picked up in the top 10, the, the last two drafts in 2022. In 2023, I think Nigard is a very good add to their thing because they were more so goaltender. Sebastian Kosa also, of course, they, they 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 were set in terms of goaltender and defenseman. Adding another forward really solidifies this pool as a top five pool in the entire NHL. You're going to notice I haven't said the Chicago Blackhawks yet. They check in at sixth. I think they're an example. Not saying their guys aren't quality. I think Leshinov is a blue chip prospect. Don't get me wrong, but beyond the Leshinov, there's not really a true number two to this prospect prospect pool. There's no real superstar. There's really good players. Sam Renzel, Gavin Hayes, Bover, Vaneker, Moore, Nazar, Spellacy, Lardis. Uh, yeah, it's a very, very deep prospect pool. But outside of Leshinov, I'm not sure. Maybe Nazar, I would say, is for sure going to be a good NHLer. But at this point, compared to the top five where there's one stud guy and then another, there's a second stud guy, maybe even a third stud, stud, top five. 30 prospect in the entire NHL. I can't really say the same about the Chicago Blackhawks. And their, their future is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. They have Connor Bedard. They have Kevin Korchinski. Two of their best, their best, their highest picks the last two years were are already playing in the NHL. So I'm, I'm not trying to slight the Chicago Blackhawks in terms of their future. I just think that they're an example of more so quantity over quality. It's still quality. They're still sixth in the entire goddamn NHL, but I have them at six. Seventh, Columbus. When looking at them, they added Caden Lindstrom, who I obviously really liked. He was my third best prospect. They also have Denton Matejchuk, Gavin Brindley, Jordan Dume, Charlie Elick. They took in the second round. I like that a lot. Ivanov is a Russian goaltender that they have in their prospect pool. Luca Pinelli, a very, very good prospect pool, basically highlighted by Caden Lindstrom and Denton Matejchuk. The top seven is pretty set in stone, in my opinion. I think that you could honestly move basically three through seven all around. I'm not trying to shade the Chicago or the the Columbus Blue Jackets, much like I wasn't trying to shade the Chicago Blackhawks. They're very good. Then we take maybe a little bit of a step back. I still really like Utah's prospect pool. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's on the same level as, say, a Columbus Blue Jackets or a Chicago Blackhawks. They got TJ Ginla this year, but they also did lose Connor Geeky. I kind of think that those guys kind of were on the same level. Maybe you would go a Ginla more so, considering he maybe has more potential. But they also have guys like Daniil Boot, Simashev, Michael Harabala, uh, Duda Lamaru from the QMJHL. I think that they have a very good prospect pool overall. I'm not maybe higher on, I'm, I'm not as high on some of those guys like Simashev, like uh, Lamaru as maybe others, but I still think they have a very good prospect pool, very bright future on top of already having a bunch of impact NHLers below the age of 23. At ninth, the Seattle Kraken, they are mainly a forward-heavy prospect pool at this point. They might have a top three forward prospect pool in the entire NHL. When looking at it, Berkeley Cadden, Shane Wright, still technically a prospect. He hasn't crossed the 30-game mark, even though he debuted on like opening night of the 2022-2023 season. Carson Rakoff, Edward Chalet, Yanni Neiman, uh, Jagger Furkus, and then in terms of defensemen, they do have Caden Price, they do have Lucas Dragasevich. So again, a lot of forward talent in that prospect pool. No real clear cut. I thought they should have went defenseman at eighth, even though Berkeley Cannon was my number seven prospect. They need some defensemen. I, I'm not too, I don't think they have a really a blue chip goaltender prospect anywhere, but still a very good prospect for, pool for Seattle. I think they're going to need it because I think they kind of do need to do some kind of retool rebuild, but they're, they're going to be starting from a pretty good spot. Just got to get a defenseman at some point. And then lastly, at 10th, I got the Calgary Flames. Now, a lot of it came from this draft in this season, trading uh, Lindholm for Bruce Devich. But when looking at it in this draft, 
Zane Parrick, Andrew Basha, Henry Muse, Matt Vay Gridden, Luke Misa. He- I already said Henry Muse. On top of last year, getting Sam Hanzik, uh, Suniev, having arguably the best goaltending prospect in Dustin Wolf. It is a very, very good prospect pool compared to a year ago, two years ago. It was probably middle of the pack, below average, arguably, but this draft really turned it around for the Calgary Flames as they continue to hopefully go further into their retool, rebuild. They're in a very good spot. Next season, they should get a top five pick. Next season, they're probably going to be a top five prospect pool, considering a lot of the teams at the top five, a lot of their guys are going to graduate into the NHL. So when I do this midseason list uh, in December or January, expect the Calgary Flames to jump a decent amount, but now they have entered the top 10. So uh, San Jose, Montreal, Minnesota, Anaheim, Detroit, Chicago, Columbus, Utah, Seattle, and Calgary. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Who am I just completely wrong on? Who am I being a hater of? I get accused of hating the Blackhawks, hating the the Red Wings. I think at fifth and sixth, that's kind of respectable spots. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? I'll be seeing the next one.